I can only be reminded of aphorist Mason Kelly and what he said. Innovation violates change. This bill is about reform, and reform is changed. It's about innovation. And that's what we're moving forward with in this bill. Reform, innovation, that will create the sustainability of this great state. And I ask for your support. When you leave here tonight and you see the janitor sweeping the floor so that it's all spiffed up for tomorrow so it looks good for the public, in the wintertime they plow our roads, they guard our prisoners. Members, they're not evil. And our goal as a state lawmaker should not be to see if we can drive their wages and benefits into the ground. If you came here and you believe that, shame on you. Shame on you. The pattern of growth in spending in HHS, and particularly health care, has been increasing at a pace that it is difficult to sustain. And I would argue that it is impossible to sustain. I would even go so far as to suggest that if we decided, and I'm not suggesting we ought to, but if we did decide to take Governor Dayton's proposed tax increases to deal with our budget, that we would be back here in two years with a similar problem because the growth in spending in this area would continue to increase at double-digit rates, and there is no tax structure that can possibly sustain that level of growth, that rate of growth indefinitely. Part of this is recognizing, and it's in some of the budget proposals in this bill, that, that it is in the ability and the capacity of every citizen of this state, even if they are of lower income, to be able to manage, and they ought to be able to manage, have the freedom to manage and make decisions about their own health care. Minnesota is better than this bill, my friends. When I think about the people that I see every day, the mailman who delivers my mail, the people who go to my church with me, the people who come to a town meeting in my district, the people who come to talk to me out in the halls of this capital, if I were to say to them, how about if we throw 140,000 of us off health insurance? How about if we tell 3,000 PCA recipients they're cut off, no more services? How about if we say to some of the sickest and most disabled people in our community, community services are off the table for you. You can go live in a nursing home for the rest of your life. How many of our friends, our family, our fellow churchgoers would say, well, that sounds like a good idea. I think we should go for that plan. Only the most insensitive, cruel, and inhumane person in Minnesota would say that's a good plan.